Hello, welcome back to Monster Train. I am, as always, your host, Brett, but not the good kind. How are you doing? It's uh, 3.15. In yesterday's episode, I said I feel like I was starting to build some sort of a routine. That routine is gone today. And I just started doing the recording. I didn't do anything else before this. I'll do it after, don't worry. I meant to record this a little earlier, but I had a thought for the question that I'm going to ask you in about one minute. And instead of uh, starting the recording, I just did a bunch of research, not a bunch of research, but I did a little bit of research because the topic intrigued me. But anyway, how you doing? Uh, how's it going? I'm not doing too bad. Thanks for asking. I, uh, I've been trying to spend one hour per day doing something stream related. I like or not stream related, but like YouTube related. That's why Banners of Ruin finally came out uh, as a video. And I think I will do something after this as well. But like uh, today I, in that time slot, I've, I set a time for it, which is I'm doing it at five. I give myself a concrete time to do like an hour of some sort of work for uh, YouTube. But instead today I had a group meeting for a project that is apparently due in four days that we have barely started. So it's going to be a good couple of days, I feel. I'm looking forward to it. It's the real, it's the real shit, you know? It's like the, oh no, this is due. Uh-oh. And then we're just going to grind it out, turn in something half, probably, probably well finished. It's a five-man group. Anyway, you don't, you don't care about that. Uh, the question that I'm going to ask you today, uh, I, again, I, just, I feel, before I ask this question, I feel like I want to continuously state that I do read all of your responses to these questions and I appreciate every single one of them but I don't go through and I res don't respond to them all anymore because it's like it's not even too much I just don't know what I would say you know I ask a question you answer it feels kind of disingenuous to try and follow up from there but I do appreciate everyone that leaves the uh leaves the old comments the uh the question I have for you today is, is, is a bit of a weird one and it kind of plays into some recent questions that I've asked you, but is there, can you think of a game that, well, it doesn't have to be a game I guess, but something that you expected or would have liked to have seen do a lot better than it actually did? This is a question that's open to interpretation, but basically, I really, when I was growing up I played the Command and Conquer games. I played Red Alert and I played the actual Command and Conquers, and I think those games are really cool. There's tournaments. There's actually tournaments still for Command and Conquer 3. And I've been, I was watching one before this. This is how I how I came up with this question. Because I was like, man, it's a real shame that these tournaments aren't more popular. They're not, like, unpopular by any means. There's a caster who does videos and he gets, like, five-digit views. He gets in the tens of thousands of views, which is pretty good. But, like, the tournaments are relatively small. There's, like, maybe 24 or... Th there's, like, three people you know who are going to do well. And it just makes me sad that that game, because uh, StarCraft is still around and doing pretty well and is having strong prize pools and things like that. And it's a shame that Command & Conquer is not doing well. And the problem is just, uh, sadly, EA, uh, maybe not EA, but kind of EA. I don't like to pin blame. I don't know exactly what happened, right? But like Command & Conquer 4 sucked. Red Alert 3 was okay at best and the game came out before the big like spike in esports and, ha and was at the end of its life cycle i feel like when esports started to take off so it's a shame and a lot i feel like you could do a lot of re uh, reading on this i was looking at like old forum posts about t tournaments from like 14 years ago and i was like what the fuck but yeah that's what i was thinking about today and that's what I wanted to ask you. Do you have anything that you would think of in a similar way? Again, it doesn't have to be video games. Another option, though, recently is Grifflands. I thought that game was going to get a lot more of a following, but it did not. Anyway, uh, shall we? I think we shall. I've talked for long enough. These intros really are getting longer, but that's okay. Most of the people who tell me they don't like the intros have moved on with their lives, I feel like. Let's get to it. Uh, Exile Umbra, Default Stygian, we have Explosive Sigil, Daedalus, Shadow Arcus, Sap Seraph, Immortal Trade, Mollusk Mage, Cannibalize. It'd be a lot different if this wasn't a game that was just like 40, this is, this is about to be 40 to 60 minutes of me just talking at you about this game. And there's no time for me to sit here and discuss because I have to be focused on the game, right? So I, I take my time at the start of the game. Feels kind of important. Uh, let's take Founding Seal. Yeah, we're Penum or Primordium today. I am 
I'm happy to grab a founding seal. I'll probably... This is the combo where there's no buffs for Stalwart Snack. Stalwart Snack is... All we're doing with Stalwart Snack is hoping we see aggressive edible. I would rather take superfood, but it's superfood in the Sap Syrap, which is problematic as well. Oh, this is tough. I think these are both pretty bad. I think you have to go Stalwart Snack, though. I'm not 100% certain, because I've never actually had it line up where I have superfood in the Sap Seraph, but it does seem... I don't want to say unwinnable, but it seems a lot harder, because you're going to pass on... If you have three stacks... Because you start with three stacks, so you're going to pass on three. And the Seraph is going to hit you at least one time, so you're going to pass on, like, 12 stacks of Sap with superfood. You have to make up the difference, and maybe you would make up the difference on a run like this. Eh... I'm gonna go Stalwart Snack. It's a, that's a tough choice, though. I think you can go either way. And I really, I think you can go either way on that one. This trial is scary, but I'm going to take it because having a good, diverse set of units to pick from is going to be important. Also, we can maybe see Icy Silla play. It did make Blink unplayable, though, which is a shame. Yeah, well. I, the, these are really, this is a great combo for Incanting. You remember yesterday's run was very bad for incanting. Today's run is very good for incanting. However, uh, I have to live this combat, basically. We have Primordium. Uh, it is it is so good for incanting, this uh, setup, though, that it does make me consider... First of all, hold on. Wait a minute. Mollusk Mage with Plink? Wait a minute. When I, when I think about... I've thought about this run... But I always think about it with Torch. Why have I never thought about it with Plink? I know the answer to that question, but... It's because I hate Plink. And... Uh, the end. Should have played this guy mid floor, right? Yeah, this isn't worth I could have put the Morsel in front for 5 damage, but that's okay. Maybe I could do some weird stuff here. Maybe, maybe we can do some weird, weird gameplay here. It's Plink. Because this is... This is tantalizing. The, uh... Possibilities here? Ooh, buddy. So first of all, show me show me something cool here. We took nine, which is fine. I think it's mine collapse. And Tumbra Assault, I really... In, in this economy? I just... I... I've fallen very much on Untumbra Assault, especially with a Cannibalize in our starter. Morsel Plans as a whole got a little worse, and Untumbra Assault as a 3 damage ping got a lot worse. Mind Collapse is the same as it ever was. Offering Token is fine. We're probably playing in Can't. Click that bad boy. Hmm. So... One of the lines here, by the way, like one of, one of the options I can see is Cold Kalia. And then we put a Siren Essence onto Cold Kalia, and Cold Kalia just becomes Siren with a sweep. And that's pretty good. Shark is much safer, much easier to swing. But this is very strong. Plus two, plus two per spell on a sweeper. Yeah, alright, I'll play that. I'll play it. Primordium with a sweeper, how exciting, right? But like, it's good. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna pick Shark and do the same shit we do every day. Uh, actually, I'm gonna pick Shark. I, as it turns out, uh, the game was rigged from the start. <laughs> that's 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 the illusion of choice right there, baby. Yeah, I'm gonna play Multi Strike Cold Kalia. There's a world if I don't see, uh, it could be bad, right? If I don't see a Siren, this could be bad. But we have Multi Strike on Cold Kalia. We have Primordium. We're in an okay spot. What is this? Uh, what's like? What's the game with an illusion of choice? I want to say Mass Effect, but is that really correct? Like maybe Mass Effect Three. I've heard a lot of people saying about spoilers for Mass Effect Three, but that one's pretty old. I feel like now. Uh, anyway, I if we don't see an incant, this could be pretty bad. Really, no. Uh, no capits. I think it could be problematic if we don't see an incant. Yeah, I'll eat him. 
No, these aren't good. I haven't seen Morsel made in a long time. You think about that ever? I, we went through a period of time where I was seeing Apex and Morsel made every run. I haven't seen that guy in a long time. Honestly, thank God. Pra praise be. Very, very glad. Oh, I can do right this. Is that no? That, that that's not how that works. Okay. And uh, every now and then I I think about it, and I never remember if the heal goes before or after the frostbite. It is really it's tough to track. I feel like you could make a cool little spreadsheet effect to track it, but otherwise it's pretty tough to track what order effects trigger in in this game. I know that in the I think the last one to trigger in around is burnout, but that might have changed. I could have played Nala's Mage, it doesn't matter. This guy's very dead anyway. He had a lot of frostbite stacking up. Prismal Dust is cool. If I have to go super food I will. And We'll just kind of see what happens. Go Prismal Dust. It can be good for Super Food. It can just be good in general. Crypt Builder, sure. I picked one offering token up with Crypt Builder here. Uh, I've thought about it, and with 140 gold, we're unlikely to hit what we want in the Steel Shop anyway. It's 25% because we won't be able to reroll. So we may as well go right. Right? We win the game. Uh, is that cocky? Nah, probably not. I think with double incants, we put that on a sweeper and we crush it. I will... I will take the horde. Uh, vapor funnel's pretty cool. You can also go cleansing water, which is good. Kinstone totem... One thing that I have never actually played... I don't know why this is a gap in my uh, knowledge, because it's very strong, is kinstone totem plus... Uh, deep offering the discard your hand draw five that's a really strong combo i think it's because kinstone totem in my mind is an odd one out sort of relic it got added at a weird time and i never picked deep offering anyway so it's it's an artifact that i didn't play a lot with and it has to pair with a rare card that i never pick so but i'll click it uh, vapor funnel basically not picking vapor funnel because we have a sweeper backline should never get up there and it's fine to pick Vapor Funnel there, but eh. And then, I don't know, cleansing, cleansing water. Sure, I want to take, I want to take this one. Though. I've done it. Yeah, uh, Kinstone Totem also makes M5 Offering Token much better. And I think that this one's gonna be a gonna be a down home, good old fashioned, uh, dang old. What else can I say? Good run. The shark, I realize, is a little unnecessary. Because we're going to end up with a sweeper, but he's nice to take us through this early game here. He's a good pal. Okay. Just checking if I pull a plink there. I don't. I could have, uh, been the boss for 12, I guess. Five ten double in camp or sweep up. No, I think the siren's better. Blinking here is uh, bold. I won't do it. Yeah, I think that the sweeper will be better once it has the encant on it, of course. But right now, I should just play in the siren of the sea. Because she's going to be our boss killer. I had, to, I had to think about it. It would be a pretty big misplay to actually play the sweeper there. Because I think the sweeper would not scale enough to kill Daedalus. Throwing away some incants. Much like yesterday's run. But in today's run it's okay because we're very strong on incants. This might even be a run to throw Primordium away and play a third Siren. And kind of see how everything lines up. And I'll put Mollusk Mage in front. Yeah, look at that. And he goes away. Honestly, just eat him. And I get to play on Morsel too. Look at this. 
We're getting so much value. I should have played Anton Remorsal. Forgot about the one extra damage, but it's okay. Yeah, uh, we're not gonna get 4 4, but we're gonna get 2 2 on a sweeper, which is similarly good for our cause here on this run. It's an interesting question. Would you rather have plus 4 plus 4 onto a Siren of the Sea with multi strike? Or plus 2 plus 2 on a sweeper with multi strike? I think I do end up preferring this option with the sweeper. But it's kind of, like, it's close. I think ultimately, it's winning either way, and I think 1-1 one, one on Cold Kalia is not winning. So this is the sort of line we're playing because we know. And I, I think that without double enhance, you would not get there. An interesting question, though. Hey, it's Deep Offering. Cool. Now, I already picked a Siren. I think Nameless Siren is worse, so... Because it's no survivability and Cold Kaylee is weak. Uh, I do not need energy. I'm very good on energy. I think we'll probably play draw and then... So we missed one Hellvent. What's our Hellvent looking like? It's here, here. I can play three, but I will never play three poke for Arcus. It's impossible, so I can just take draw now. If I don't see aggressive edible, I throw Primordium away, I'm pretty sure. And I guess go right. Look for upgrades on deep offering, remove train stewards. Sadly, I don't think Mollusk Mage is going to make the cut in this run. I could take Silophyte. I think the run is functionally the same, but then Silophyte gets stamped. But it's, uh, it's a little scary. I think the difference of 5 health might matter. Not a lot. But a little. That's a that's one hell of a death sound. Digian has some very visceral death sounds. See Tethys. Yeah, I, mean, I guess I'll take Star Wars Snack too, but pretty tough. This is a bad Primordium, by the way. Like Primordium, he is a. He is an extremely strong champion, but I do think that with Stygian, Primordium does struggle a little bit. Gotta lean on the Stygian more. Value stone on this. Value stone minus one run. I'm not doing an infinite on this run. It's too late in the night, and the infinite's way too hard to get rolling. To make these cards that are untargeted free. Yeah. I don't think I want to spend my money here. I've been way too aggressive with money spending lately. It's shaken my faith in myself, so we're gonna take her easy. And. I, you know, I could probably take this. We have Plank and we have Frozen Lance. So I'm pretty confident in Mark of Invasioning here. Yeah, there's two outcomes for, for this. You get Titan Sentry first and then he nullifies the first wave for you. Or you get Siren first. Or, or this is the other option, I guess. You get both. Both is also pretty good. Siren. I'm going to call her Siren a lot of times on this run. This is Cold Kalia, And I will be calling her Siren a lot. So you're aware. But no, we get her first, and then she sweeps them up, and then clears the upcoming wave. Or we get uh, shark first, and then he just cancels out the first two waves of haste for us anyway. I will take more if I play these frozen lances, but that's probably okay. So what? Becomes twelve, and then eight. No, it's twelve, twelve, eight. That's right. So you go. It's eight. Then you go one. It's. 12. 12, then you kill 2, it's 12, you kill 3, it's back to 8, and then if you kill 4, it's 0, of course. But, it's over less hits, so we can chump more of it by playing Train Steward and then eating Train Steward. Or we could just get Lifesteal, which heals it back. The, the Infused Clip Guardian is a bit concerning, I will say. It's pretty, it's pretty slow, the scaling currently. However, 
easy easy to look at the scaling and go oh man oh man but like you know it's a it's a haste combat so you gotta take this combat with a bit of a uh, bit of salt here let me use let me use the extreme phenomenal power of double mollusk mage to take down half of this enemy's health thanks double mollusk mage might be worth to self infuse him Going to avoid most of the haste. It's scary always to start the chain of killing off haste enemies because as soon as you start the chain, you can't stop the chain of killing haste enemies, right? Or else you double stack a heavy wave. And we made it. Surprisingly. Or maybe not surprisingly. Unsurprisingly, perhaps, depending on your look. I'm a little... I'm a, I was a little... That's a mystic, but I always am. Goodbye, my friend. I need to eat that guy there. We get two extra in cans for it, plus six. But yeah, this is this is a little slower than I anticipated. But then again, 66, 74 times two, uh, we put in a second one of these scaling at a similar rate. You take off like what the 12 something that Primordium has given. 15? I think it's 15. Right now. Yeah, we're gonna get there. Ideally, we pick up quick, and then we just make a second Cold Kalia, and we walk through this run. He did get eaten, okay. Thought I didn't see the eaten symbol on Primordium there, so I was... watching that. Really need engine upgrade. Feast is a free incant. Feast is zero energy incant top floor. Excavation Eruption is pretty good as well. I think this is a better card here. It's a bit more, it has a bit more of an out to it. Beast is just lazy. I should take this, I feel. I think you can take either one. Ah, uh, hey, Frenzied Swarm. Wake up, click Frenzied Swarm, repeat. Now, if the game wants to be real ridiculous, they show me whole over Intrinsic here. And then most of our fears are assuaged. Good word, assuaged. No, neither of those options, but that's okay. Let's just take more things to zero. I do feel pretty good about double draw this run. We can do plus 20 consume on a plank, why not? Remove consume deep offering and then giving it value stone is pretty good. Even without it, it's pretty good. I'm gonna slap that remove consume down. I could make it minus one, but at three, this is okay at three energy, because we get some energy back, assuming it discards anything. And then I'll keep making Frozen Lances free, I suppose. Uh, what's in the next ring? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, okay, so... I should have gone right here. However... My eyes deceived me. I thought that was a trinket shop there. My bad. Uh, it's not the end of the world, I don't think. There's, there's, We didn't hit here, so it's a lot easier to say I should have gone right. But I should have gone right. It's nice to get the health and the money, though. We get a pretty big boon. But, like, I should have looked closer. I knew what was coming, but... It's okay. I'm not too worried about it. I... I just missed soft. Happens. I I don't know if I mentioned, but I was getting I was I was experiencing some eye strain uh, later at night. So I've been playing, especially I've, I've turned on the nightlight mode in Windows, which kind of tints the screen a little bit orange. And so every now and then I've been miss seeing things like that. And it's a small price to pay because it's been helping my eyes late at night quite a bit. I should take 10 here. What's the worst card in this deck? It's probably Immortal Trade. I can at least get rid of one of them. But yeah, I just, I looked at it and I saw that was, that was registered in my brain as a trinket shop. I did not look closely enough. Hard to get this deck under control. It's going to be double draw because we have crazy energy. Even more so. 
you know, plastic tier. We have crazy energy and even more so with uh, extra draw, because extra draw is more plays on... that card called? Offering token. Because offering token, if we're drawing it over and over again, if we're drawing three or four of them, eventually you run out of cards. Couldn't think of the couldn't think of the name though. I actually think I'm going to put Mollusk Mage behind the shark. I don't mind the Ember Drain I'll take for this. Because I could have play I could have played Mollusk Mage and then cannibalized him to cancel the Ember Drain, but I don't think it's worth. I look at that energy gain. Eleven to two, and then sixteen. I think that I should play. Yeah, Blink doesn't get the kill here. I think that I should just play my spells for the enchants. Worth considering throwing some things at uh, the scary enemies here, though. And this turn with deep offering, most likely. Throw out these. So if I play Mollusk Mage. Blink, it's probably value. And just Frozen Lance is fine. I thought I was gonna. I, I miscounted my energy there. But that's okay. I deep offering my with it anyway. I'm a pretty good Crypt Builder. Uh, on an actually very good Crypt Builder. And then. Exactly. You'll die to Frozen Lance. There's no way I don't pull a Frozen Lance for this enemy coming up. A 38, 41 times 2. The boss is not stealth boss, so we don't need to worry on that front. I think we're good here. I will take the Ember Drain 2 in order to purge the Immortal trade on this combat. Also should have played my targeted spell on the enemy, but did not. Maybe you should just cannibalize Primordium there, even. Hmm. Interesting hypothesis. Worth thinking about a little bit. We can cheat around the Ember Drain with these offering tokens. I should play this. Odds are I end up getting to get my energy back here anyway. And indeed, it is the case. We only get one energy, but it's a Frozen Lance. And a Crypt Builder, and get to push this guy to the back. Yeah, 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 no problems. Good fight. The Lifesteal... Yeah, we would have probably been fine without it. But it was still nice. Ember Forge. Sad. Could take Engine Upgrade, but again, I don't really... In this deck, that's very expensive. And I can't play this as an incant. It's a net. It's a negative to take this card, because plus one energy sounds good, but the energy is not super useful because of Kinstone Totem. So, this and this is a card that I will not be playing on my top floor most likely. If I don't play it as an incant, I'm gonna press skip. Each synergy is pretty good, especially with all these offering tokens. 150 damage. It'll get lowered a bit by the end of the run, but still, 120-ish damage is pretty good. Alright, just pretend that we, uh, just, just pretend that we have Quick on our Sire and, and we are cruising here. That's what's happening, of course. I, I like, I actually, I love Mollus Mage on this run. I just drop him and he fixes problems. Icicle Fracture is pretty underwhelming. We have a lot of discards, so this is anti-synergy there. Firewall. Eh. Firebox. Eh. It's gonna be hard for them to show me something that excites me. I mean, health act is pretty good. But I'll save my money. There's money coming up. If I buy health pack, I'm at... I should, I'll, I'll, I'll be not lazy. I'm at 90 if I buy health pack. Puts me at 165. I think Arcus gives 75, so I'll be around... Mid okay, I can buy this, and I think that it's fine. Right, it makes Prismal Dust a little better. Yeah, build a card. Frostbite, Spikes, Sap. This is a bit of a... 
This is a tough choice because if I click Sap, I use the card as a, a defensive option against the Divinity. But if I click Sap, I can't click Buff. I'll click Sap. I, the odds are against me that I see Buff. There it is. Too bad. Uh, we can take the... He so this is, this is the interesting thing about building a card here. You may be thinking that the only option here is to take the damage effect, right? However, I think there is a reasonable case for taking the heal effect. The heal effect obviously not going to be too great, but in a pinch it gives this card a crazy amount of flexibility. I can either use it to lower the uh, Divinity's damage output, or I can use it to save Cold Kalia from the brink of death. Because this is a big heal, it's heal 30. We have lifesteal to fix that problem though, but... I, I just I feel like healing the enemy for 30 is usually not going to matter, and I'll take card draw is too late for me to want gold. That's 20, my bad. But yeah, I, I think that healing an enemy for 20 is usually not going to matter. And the sap will wear off if I need to use it as a heal effect on myself. It's only minus six, minus four, minus two over the next three turns. I think that generally that makes sense. However, you may disagree. The shark is unupgraded. He's just chilling here. He does fall off a bit. Which Arcus is this? Blinding Shattering. This is the one. So this is Curse. Shark gets to stay for Curse Arcus because he does quite a bit on Curse Arcus. He's going to get removed soonish. And realistically, I should get rid of Mollusk Mage. But he's so, he's so cute though. And look at him. I've been playing, I've been playing too much mini motorways lately. I tried to reshape the train tracks there because that's inefficient. My brain, as I was just kind of idly talking, I was like, Ooh, who, who put these train tracks like this? This is awful. That's how it's supposed to be. Brain. Okay. I believe in Plink. Honestly, why bother? Hey, no infusion here is really good. I'm gonna drop the shark. Yeah, discard Mollus Mage. He'll come back when we need him most. Yeah, I can also use Old Magic too, just like, as an incant. I can put it on to Primordium here since we didn't pick Super Food also. I'm gonna focus on incanting on these turns. Looking ahead here, I feel like, is a bit of a bait. It's not that scary. I'll draw cards that answer this. I should just get my incant to roll in here, is my feeling. X plus three, sure. I think that I just full focus on incanting. The enemies aren't even close to me yet. Continue to incant. Play play one frozen lance, I think, and then we play deep offering. Gain two extra energy to play the rest of the turn out. Pretty close to right. Yeah, look at how much stronger our siren is because we focus so fully on incanting. She becomes strong enough to meet the challenges that are on their way to her. Seems correct. I think I've been baiting myself a little bit with the... Let's play out the same. I'm gonna... I'm gonna sap Primordium, and then I'm going to eat Primordium. I need to get more than what? Primordium had 12-12 in them, so... From eating, I need to get more than 12-12 in value. What do we get? We get pretty close to that, but we get it all right now. That was a uh, 9-12 in stats right there. Now, unlikely that I get any more, so my impatience may be a negative. However, a sickle looking at him. And I get the incant, so realistically, if you get the incant too, I think the stats are worth it there. We got value. The biggest mistake I could do here is playing Mollusk Mage. I'll sap the boss. Sure. Doesn't, actually doesn't matter, right? Okay. I'm just playing Frenzied Swarm to stop the damage. Oh, 103 times 2. We... I think that I have been making this mistake a lot lately, and it's, it is a mistake where I'm playing and trying to plan ahead for my... There's no way this triple hits front. Yeah, look at that. I sit there and I try to plan too far ahead for my turns, and I end up hamstringing myself and not encamping enough. 
I don't think that's the case on yesterday's run. I think that on that run it was just too hard to aim camp, but it might have been the case. It can discard cannibalize comfortably. I know I'm not playing that. Yeah, the boss did take like he took a pretty good chunk, and we have some damage shield. So. One damage shield, 145 health. He should die, right? Oh, not quite. Pretty close, though. Uh, Immortal Trade will most likely seal the deal here. Actually... Yeah, there you go. A little close on that one, but... I wasn't concerned. We wouldn't have died, I don't think, because of the Frostbite stacked up. We would have most likely gone to Pyre and died, but... Scary, nonetheless. Rod Spike is a fun one to take here, but it's also very bad. Wretch! Uh, not the run for it. More draw for sure. I could I, I could have taken space had I uh, passed correctly and then duplicated here, but alas, I did not. Kill me quick, please. Endless. 5, 10, 25. Quick. Cool. Good. Quick is better than can armor too. It just negates enemy damage. Hey, aggressive edible. Sure. I'm going to be throwing Primordium away. However, it's fine nonetheless. We're taking 25 pack shards here, so we're just gonna throw like plus 10 piercing ancient synergy. Value stone deep offering, although yeah, value stone deep offering is fine. Could value stone ancient synergy also, but either one. I like it's either. It's, it's inefficient. You could just like, look at this. You could just go like draw from here right to there. Who, who designed this? Such a waste of roads. And you're gonna have traffic at this intersection? I don't understand. This is the last fight that should be scary. We respect it and then we should walk through the rest of this run. Especially this fight specifically. Specifically, this Gilded Wing that started in turn 1, deal with a 290. A little easier since we have weak, but... And we have the Primordium. So it's a little bit easier. Hmm. Interesting. It's weird because I'm not really looking for anything when I'm cycling. I'm just cycling for the sake of it. There's no card I'm looking to play. I am just playing spells. I'm gonna go to Super Ultra for the remainder of this run. I should have gone to Super Ultra earlier, however, I did not. And now here we are. This is a pretty good one. I can drop Mollusk Mage down here. I, I said maybe I shouldn't look ahead so much, but this is... I, there's no way that I can just pass up uh, this much damage. 144. That's definitely worth more than the 4-4. Four four, or the 2-2. Two two. I can go for the Collector. Yeah, that's also worth. Thanks, Mollusk Mage. Mollusk, like, s seriously though. Secret hero of this run. Not, not so secret hero of this run. Mollusk Mage, what the hell? He popped off this run. Mollusk Mage absolutely did it to him. We're at 55 times 2, is that correct? 67 times 2, okay. I think we get to the number we need to get to on this turn. I mean, we definitely kill this wave, right? We have Ancient Synergy. But I think we set up to kill all waves forever here. Trust. Interesting. Uh, but fine. We're not, not quite to 290, actually. We need to be, we need to be quite a bit higher. But... We cycle the deck very quickly, and I can just throw Ancient Synergy that way. And it should be fine. Doesn't have to be perfect, yeah. Cannibalize. That card should get removed, for sure. Cannibalize is dead to me. It's just, it's so much... Click, confirm. Click, confirm. I... Mentally. Click confirm, click confirm, I just... I can't take it. Oh, he's at 104. Yeah, that makes sense. I was like, huh, shouldn't this enemy be uh, causing me problems? Nah, he's 104. 
He's dead. Okay, we do need a bit of a... With only one, we aren't favored for killing bosses, I feel. So... When we get the second siren, it's gonna be fine. I... I could have skipped the value stone. This is something that... This is one of those things that if I thought about it a little more, I would have maybe made a different choice, but it's also a non-choice, so... I, you may, it's a common mistake that I will make where I forget that the unit that I want to duplicate has a pack shard cost associated. Ember Cash is cool. Card incants. And it makes more to incant with. Same front name tone. Both fine. Hmm. Little divine artifact here. Little divine chain of gems. Don't mind if I do. Actually, plus two magic power on your third spell. This is gonna make Plink a monster card. Hell yeah. Blink. Alright. Left it is. Right, so the there was there's a choice you make here between value stone and divine horde. However, I did not think about it because I am duplicating my siren here. I am relegating primordium to the dungeon. And it is fine. But yeah, I, I think I would pick the value stone because we have all of the artifacts I could want anyway, so. I'm not even going to Endless the Shark if there's not a good relic here. Yeah, Chain of Gems. I don't think that's good enough. I'm going to spend 120 gold and I'm going to remove Hot Shark. And I'm going to spend 180 gold and remove Cannibalize. And that's going to be what we do here. You could also go to 115 if you wanted to. If you're just trying to win, I don't think there is... I, there is not really a reason to go above 100. You can, but usually they don't offer me anything that makes me go, Oh yeah, this is worth. I need to go above 100 here. I'm gonna discard Primordium for the energy. Huh. Discard Blink also. I will just silence here. I know I've been saying hold, but I'll just silence there. I don't, as much as I want to solely worry about incanting, I will need to spend time playing spells where it makes sense to. I mean, honestly, Mollusk Mage can sit on this floor. As far as I'm concerned, he can kick it. He's gonna bring a pretty good amount of value to a position such as this. There's Crypt Builder. That's a uh, 50 damage right there out of our boy. Our young lord. Bottom card, huh? No worries. It happens, Ancient Synergy. Happens to the best of us. Every now and then. Do you believe in Plink? <laughs> what a great card. It makes absolutely no difference but what a great card am i right oh what a card oh plink i could not count the ways that i love the plinks absolute plinkage right there i'm gonna play the prismal dust i think maybe oh yeah with that draw for sure i'll play prismal dust for 10. I think it is good enough. This is a good thing to do because it will... 10, 10 Prismal Dust is a good payout and it will help fight off Seraph, who I think is not the most concerning, but at least worth being concerned about. Oh wow, it just dies to that. And I guess it would. This Model's Mage is doing great. And this is, this is not a revelation, I should say. Olus Mage, I know he's very good. The problem is you usually can't fit him on a floor. Because usually on your run, in a run that plays like this, you're usually, usually being the key word here, Stygian main. And in Stygian main, Soulguard or Tethys, I mean, if you're throwing away Tethys, right? But some on, on a majority of runs, you see Conduit Tethys at least a single time. And that is better than Mollus Mage here because it makes all the spells free. However, however, uh, the reason uh, Conduit would not be better than Mollusk Mage here because we got Kinstone Totem and times 5 
on offering token, which has become our energy generation way higher than anything we would need. Leading us to this position where we have double draw and our Primordium is useless and it's it's really an interesting run, right? Because Modelist Mage is great. Modelist Mage is a very good unit that usually doesn't fit onto your floor. However, we have a run where I didn't take space to accommodate our champion because our champion offered very little to the run. Sorry to say uh, Primordium, but not aggressive at level 3, what are you doing here, right? And then all of a sudden we end up in this position where, since I didn't take space because I didn't want to keep Primordium and I messed up on getting the third Siren, Mollusk Mage gets his time in the sun. And look at how handsome he is. Extremely is the answer if you're not looking. First of all, look at him. And second of all, extremely. What are they at? 154 times 2, 138 times 2? Yeah, that's good enough. They could be much higher on damage, but they would be much lower on health if I had taken Rage Siren. I don't think that it's uh I don't think it's a close call. Because without with Rage Siren you would have to pay, you'd have to take uh you can't armor two of some sort, right? You'd have to get some scaling defense on this. Another thing worth noting is if I were playing around Primordium on this run, Primordium would just die turn one every time. Now, there were options to mitigate that if I were playing around Primordium. We could have taken the... Like, what's the, the, the chain of gems that we were shown in the trinket shop? Really, really good hit there. And no damage shield is very good as well. But I, I had options if I were trying to play... Primordium, and if I were trying to play Primordium, we would be playing into uh, probably damage shielding him. And sadly, Mollusk Mage is Mollusk Mage will be playing the role of Pethys on this run and fucking dying. Yeah, pl played the book there because I know I'm going to discard on this turn anyway. Play out. Could have left one of those up at one cost. However, that's okay. Actually, looking at that, I I should have played this completely differently. However, because I I could not, I can not infer, but I can know from the draw that I didn't need. I could have gotten one more in can on this turn. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I could have had one more in can. Misplay alert. There's no universe where this enemy outscales me. It's only gaining two armor per incant, so I can just ignore it. You ever prismal dust your uh you ever prismal dust this man here? I don't think you do. It's fun to think about though. What excavation eruption down here? It's sometimes we get lucky. We don't, but there's a there's a very small subset of cases where you kill the Kill the spell shield enemy there. It's worth checking. I like I needed it up here for anything. I'll put the Prismal Dust on the back Siren, because front Siren's gonna take most of the spikes damage, and she might die. Which is fine, because if she dies, then back Siren will just back, back Siren wins, basically. With the loss of our young lord, the timeline is shattered. Card does so much damage. Ancient Synergy, man. What a nuts card. Three energy deal one million. Approximately. On this turn, I have plenty of energy to play with for deep offering. To be great. I skipped old magic last time, but I will not skip it this time. And I am playing everything up here. I can also, uh... Yeah, you know... I did keep this in the deck for a reason, Immortal Trade. I can just remove any doubt of a Siren dying by playing one Immortal Trade. It's not like we need our energy for anything, we have Kinstone Totem to get around it. There is no actual risk to this. I get to take my turn as if I did not do that. 
Wow, excavation eruption. Alright, Plink. This is your holy mission. Ping that spell shield. What the fuck? <laughs> Alright, Plink, whatever. You're dead to me anyway, Plink. That's alright. No, he didn't get to he didn't get to like full carry or anything spectacular like that. But I really feel like the the hero of this run is Young Mollusk Mage. He saved us a lot of damage. I'm, I'm a real fool. I was thinking so much about landing this Crypt Builder on this enemy and discarded every card that would play it. Hilariously enough. Hmm. Gonna take a bit of damage here. I don't believe I will die, especially not with old magic, but I'm gonna take a bit. I am indeed taking some. Quite a bit, actually. But, that's the end. And I'm not gonna play anything else, because don't touch it, we got the axe. We take those. Very, uh, very good, very straightforward run. Uh, it turns out starting Founding Seal gives you a lot of flexibility as long as you live. The end. You see, you see Primordium, you see a sweeper, you go, ah, this is gonna be a Primordium sweep run, huh? Not got you with a little, got you with a little sneaky here. This is not a, not a quick sweep run with Primordium. It's a double quick sweep, double incant run with a Siren infusion. Gotcha. But there is, there is an unsung young lord on this run who saved us a pretty sizable amount of damage, I feel. Uh, maybe a run saving amount, I'm uncertain. But Mollusk Mage did a ton on this, on this run. And it would be impolite of me to say it was all Cold Kalia. A little assistance on those early turns from Mollusk Mage just amping up those plinks just a touch. Thanks, Mollusk Mage. And thank you for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy, don't forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.